Ahoy hoy, I'm Planner Walk and welcome to Flattest Videos, where I take a look at the flattest videos from the latest videos on the internet. Now I don't know how long this video is going to go for, but I'm going to try and keep it brief as I've got a bit of a cold and unfortunately they haven't developed a vaccine for the common cold yet. Did someone say vaccines? No? Oh that's good because vaccines will die! <coughs> okay. Anyway, let's see what we've got in store for ourselves today. Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. So that line can only really mean one thing. That this is a video from Gigantor. In this brief presentation... Brief presentation? His video is 20 minutes long. I've actually had to do a presentation in 3 minutes. That's brief, not 20 minutes. We're going to look at four issues related to flat earth maps and projections. Now I could just go ahead and re-upload Gigantor's video and call it a day. You know, I'd debunk the flat earth and I'd have a video out. But first off, that would be very boring because his video is very long and boring. So I'm going to cut it down quite a bit. So this does work as a projection for anything that is uh, north of the equator because it is the same as the projection from the North Pole for the northern hemisphere on the globe. So two things. First off, seeing as it's a projection, it would not be the exact same as a globe because if you're trying to flatten out a spherical object, you're not going to have things looking exactly the same as they would in real life. Even if you were to just have half a globe, you still wouldn't be able to flatten that out properly. And second off, you said that it works for a projection because it's the same as a projection from the northern hemisphere on a globe. Maybe that might be because Earth is a globe, Gigantor. And the problem is when using this particular projection is of course the distortion that you get of the land masses that are beyond the equator, such as this very elongated Australia, which also puts it very, very far, apparently, from uh, South America. Try and find me a flat Earth map that does not distort any of the land masses whatsoever. And we can also be led to erroneously believe that we then have an ice wall surrounding all these continents. Are you telling me that there isn't an army of penguins guarding the edge of the earth? Bullshit. But we still have uh, an issue here with this vast distance between uh, Eastern Australia, for example, and uh, South America, Chile and Argentina. Now, uh, this is a bone of contention when it comes to flight plans. Uh, let's just look at an example here. Uh, here we have a flight between uh, Australia and Chile that uh, is represented and would appear to exist. I think uh, the flight is a single flight that takes about 14 hours. At least he's admitting that that flight exists rather than saying Oh, that's just a fake flight or something, like I've seen other flat earthers do. So people will say, this isn't possible on the flat earth, because they are referring to this particular type of projection, or this type of projection. That is, of course, because a lot of flat earthers tend to use that projection. If you were to propose another projection we could use, then we could test that projection and see how well it works. So, before we look at how that is possible on a flat Earth, let's have a look at this first. Uh, here we have an azimuthal map anywhere projection. This is a really handy little tool to, to help see how projections actually work. It's on uh, a website called maps.ontarget.cc and we can start moving things around and we'll see that as we move around then of course we end up with everything else being uh, distorted that the farther away it is from that central point keep that in mind but of course what is essential to understand here is that wherever you center this projection, 
and that is entirely up to you, then you will get distortion of everything else that's south of it. So let's just have a look then at uh, the way flight plans look on, on the Earth. Uh, you can just go and find this anywhere really. Uh, and we can see here that we've got all this hopping about and uh, some very straight lines that go from various locations, but then some others which appear to follow what's often referred to as the Great Circle Route. Again, it's a good thing that he's recognizing things like Great Circle Routes. Uh, but, uh, you know, nothing actually really crosses the North Pole. Well, there are a couple of flights that do get very close to the North Pole because the top part of the map is the North Pole. And another thing to consider, of course, is if they're flying Great Circle routes, which is the shortest path between two points on a globe, and the path doesn't go over the North Pole, then why would they go over the North Pole? And um, what I've done with this one is to change the projection to a, an, a, a have it the center point as Antarctica. And we can see from this that, uh, you know, the flights are not uh, crossing over. Uh, they're not kind of going out here to, and then coming back in here. So the entirety of that outer edge is just one single point. I could choose any point on Earth that doesn't have a flight going directly overhead, use that as the outer edge and say, Oh look, no flights go off one edge and come back through the other side, so therefore it's a valid flat earth map. Not to mention that you've now got many, many more problems because flights in the northern hemisphere should now be taking far longer than they actually do. What I'm going to show you now is that uh, the southern flight uh, such as this can work with this projection. What I did was just take a, a screenshot of what we were looking at just now and we can see here that uh, we do in fact get a straight line from Australia to South America and uh, this line then goes under New Zealand here and above Antarctica here and so we can see that this of course uh, is represented by this this arc here is represented by a globe projection when we do it with this azimuthal equidistant projection from the South Pole, we can see that we get a straight line. But of course, you still have a problem. Let me explain classic Gigantor style. Okay, so here we go. We have a line here which is from Melbourne to Santiago. That flight takes 13 hours and 15 minutes. We have a line here from Hong Kong to LAX. That flight takes 12 hours and 55 minutes and here is the flight right here 13 hours and 15 minutes from Melbourne to Santiago and here we've got Hong Kong to LA and the flight is here direct and it's 12 hours and 55 minutes back to this again as you can see this line is clearly far shorter than this line here and if I go to this great circle route you can see that it actually has a big curve away from Antarctica. Explain that, Gigantor. Maybe that a, a flight will fly in a particular direction because it takes advantage of uh, jet streams. So going east to west is often not the same route as going west to east because in, in opposite directions it's easier to follow uh, a longer uh, but quicker route because of the direction of the wind or the jet streams. So that could be a possible explanation if it weren't for the fact that to go from Santiago to Melbourne it takes 14 hours and 45 minutes and to go from LAX to Hong Kong it takes 14 hours and 40 minutes. And if I go to the map as you can see it's a much shorter distance between Melbourne and Santiago on this map than it is between LAX and Hong Kong. I pointed at them in the wrong order, but you know what I mean. Uh, so we can see though that nothing's actually crossing what might be considered the North Pole. So this kind of works. It kind of doesn't work though. 
Also, a very important thing to mention with that projection is the amount of distorted land masses that you have in the Northern Hemisphere. If distorted land masses are a concern to you, don't propose a solution which has distorted land masses. So, from this Thomas Bradford projection of the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere from uh, the 1830s, I believe, uh, we can see that what we have is this projection from the North Pole and this projection from the South Pole, which together we can create a globe projection. But really, you could, you could join these two uh, projections anywhere. Right here, they, they join at South America. But if you imagine them as cogwheels that turn, we could then join Africa here with Africa here. Is this meant to be an argument for the flat earth? Because to me, it sounds like a good argument for the globe. And the key thing throughout all this is the fact that he kept on using the word projections. You know what projections are based off? The globe. Leave a like and subscribe if you liked that video. Leave a comment telling me how on earth is this meant to be an argument for a flat earth. Cause I don't know. I'll leave a link to the original video in the description because I left a lot out just to save on time. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons, Fight the Flat Earth, Stan Trucker, What Jesus, Robert Legere 3, and Wolfie. If you want to support me on Patreon, link will be in the description and it's always appreciated. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.